Joining us now, the president and founder of Parents Defending Education, Nicole Neely. Nicole, you're the perfect person for this story because now we've got Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's office is boycotting NBC and MSNBC. Why? Because he's saying Andrea Mitchell needs to correct her false statement that he does not want slavery taught in Florida public schools. That's totally wrong. But they're appearing to double down with a non-apology. They're not correcting it, really. What do, you, what do you make of all this? Are voters being misled? They're absolutely being misled. And I mean, let's be honest, the MSNBC is obviously just a propaganda wing of the, de of the Democratic Party at this point. But Andrea Mitchell said that uh, the non-apology said that her language was imprecise. I mean, let's, let's cut let's cut through all this right now. It's a lie. It's a falsehood. There should have been an apology. My bad, mea culpa. And they didn't do that because they don't want to because they are trying to confuse, confuse voters and individuals. Okay, let's watch what happened. Let me ask you, what does Governor Ron DeSantis not know about black history and the black experience when he says that slavery and the aftermath of slavery should not be taught to Florida school children. In my interview last Friday with Vice President Harris, I was imprecise in summarizing Governor DeSantis's position about teaching slavery in schools. Governor DeSantis is not opposed to teaching the fact of slavery in schools, but he has opposed the teaching of an African-American studies curriculum, as well as the use of some authors and source materials that historians and teachers say makes it all but impossible for students to understand the broader historic and political context behind slavery and its aftermath in the years since. Is Andrea Mitchell still being imprecise? Okay, we know Florida's history guidelines require all Florida public schools teach slavery and racism. DeSantis is talking about critical race theory. He calls that state-sanctioned racism that teaches kids to hate each other. He, sees, he says we need to get back to the basics of history, reading, and math. But Andrea Mitchell did not say any of that. No, it's strange that she really left out a huge part of the actual truth. And for people who talk about let's teach true history, let's teach facts, misinformation, all this stuff, the fact that they continue to lie and obfuscate is insulting. It's insulting to voters that there's a reason that so many people are continuing to move to Florida away from places like California, like New York, where they are getting that critical race theory laden education for their children. Okay, so parents across the nation, school board parents are really outraged that there's porn in school libraries. We had a case in Georgia where the mama bears, moms who were opposed to that, you know, tried to speak out at school board meetings. They were censored and now they won, you know, you know, money back in their settlement because the school board was wrong. It was the First Amendment right of them. Just, just to point this out, legal pros, uh, Nicole, legal experts say it is illegal. It is illegal in U.S. states to distribute porn to minors. I mean, so are the teachers unions just winging it? Let's watch this teacher saying to parents, butt out of schools. Watch this in Arizona. I have a master's degree because when I got certified, I was told I had to have a master's degree to be an Arizona certified teacher. We all have advanced degrees. What do the parents have? Are we vetting the backgrounds of our parents? Are we allowing the parents to choose the curriculum and the books that our children are going to read? I think that it's a mistake. Why is that a mistake? Are parents deciding the curriculum or, or are they just saying stop with the porn in school libraries? What's going on here? They are, they're saying stop with the porn, and this is the tyranny of experts. We know better than you do how to raise your children. Sit down, shut up, and let us put our ideas into your child's heads. And they're offended that parents are actually standing up and pushing back. I mean, at the end of the day, no, parents, they want a voice. They want to be able to, you know, like, a little bit of insight into the process, and we're being shut out of that as well. And so that's why we're seeing so many people, again, flee the public school system because of this kind of condescension and dismissal from people who are there with taxpayer dollars. So it looks like school choice is gaining traction nationwide. The move away public school from public schools. You know, people want public schools to be fixed, but we got now Oklahoma, Iowa, Utah. They're saying yes, tax credits, refundable tax credits that parents can use on private schools. Arizona doing this too. Your final word. I think it's, it really is going to, he who pays the piper calls the tune, right? And so at the end of the day, if parents are going to walk because public schools are crappy, then it forces public schools to be better. If they want to maintain those students, if they want to maintain those families, then level up and cut the crap. Got it. Nicole Neely, Straight Shooters, good to have you on. Thanks for joining us.